How you doing, sir? How are you? What do you think about abortion? Huh? Do you think abortion's murder? Yeah. It is, and they kill them in Planned Parenthood. Huh? Yep, Planned Parenthood is where they give women pills and they do, they help them uh, kill their babies. Terrible thing. Yeah. A lot of black babies die here, you know. It's a I terrible do. thing. I do. God bless you, sir. So the reason I'm out here is because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ teaches us the way of salvation. The way of salvation is only through the blood of Jesus Christ. And because he's made a way for us to have salvation, we have to respond to that gospel by the power of the Holy Spirit. But there's something more too, not, not to be saved. But there is a duty that we have as Christians, people who call upon the name of Jesus Christ and that obligation is to save those who are perishing. You see, Christianity that just calls for people to do nothing, to just go to church on Sunday and not work towards establishing the justice of God is a fake and a false and a weak Christianity. It's not Christianity at all. It's just pietism. So I'm here calling out for the lives of these little babies, these unborn babies, and there's many ways that people kill their babies, men and women. They kill their babies through surgical abortion. I don't know if they do that here. Surgical abortion where they rip that little child apart limb for limb out of the woman's womb. They kill babies by they kill babies by women taking pills that changes their bodies in such a way that that little baby cannot live. It cuts off the food supply to that little child. And when that happens, the baby dies. It is something done that with malice aforethought It's done intentionally. And you know, if some, some guy slips the R46, RU486 pill into the drink of a pregnant woman and that baby dies, that man would be charged with murder. But if the woman voluntarily does it, she can legally kill that baby. Why? What's the difference? Wantedness is not a criteria. Wanting and wantedness is not a criteria of a person's value or worth. Because that's just based upon human whim. People all the time are wanted and not wanted. And if we place the value of life upon whether a person is wanted or not, well, that opens the door for all kinds of uh, murder, euthanasia, abortion, infanticide, homicide. It must be the objective value of the Word of God. Because the Bible teaches that our value is not founded upon anything human. Our value is founded upon the objective standard of the Word of God that was inspired, breathed out by God Himself. 
And so the Word of God is a reflection of God Himself. And God said that He created man in His image. Male and female, He created them. And so our value, our value as human beings comes because God tells us the image of God has been created within us so that every human being doesn't matter whether it's a single cell human being, doesn't matter how old the human being is or how young the human being is. According to the Word of God, all human beings are created in His image. And we have value because God is the Creator. But people shut that off when they want to kill somebody. I mean, people shut that off during slave times. They believed that the slaves were not human beings. That's what happened during slave times. In fact, the Supreme Court of the United States of America proclaimed, hey, how you doing, brother? How's everything going? God bless you, sir. The Supreme Court said that uh, slaves were not human beings. How wicked and sinful is that? because they did not get their understanding of the value of a human being from the Word of God. The government cannot legislate. The government is not the one that determines who is a human being and who is not a human being, who is worthy of living and who is not worthy of living. Our worth comes from God Almighty. That's how we know the value of a human being is because of what the Bible says of what God has shown us in His Word, that all human beings are created in the image of God. And therefore, we do not have the right to take their innocent lives, particularly little innocent babies. We don't have that right. And even though the government says it's okay, it's not okay in God's eyes. It's not okay in God's eyes. That's why God says, thou shalt not murder. God says, thou shalt not murder because he's the giver and author of life. The most we could do as human beings is procreate. We can, in cooperation with God, bring forth the conception of a human being. But that human being's value and worth is not in the Supreme Court, is not in public opinion, is not what the legislature says it is. The value of a human being is because of who God says that he or she is. And so we lived in a time in the United States of America where they said that slaves were not human beings and that allowed them legally to, ma to, to uh, man-steal and enslave human beings. And that was wicked and sinful in God's eyes. In Nazi Germany, they said that Jews were not human beings. Hitler and the philosophy of Friedrich Nietzsche and Charles Darwin said that there were some human beings that had less value than other human beings. And so Adolf Hitler and his regime passed laws where people could be slaughtered based upon their ethnicity or their religious beliefs. But you see how mankind works? As soon as you leave the Word of God, then life becomes relative and a lot of people die. And now we live in a time and an age where people do not believe that little babies inside the womb are human beings and worthy of life and worthy of protection. They do not believe that babies in the womb are equal and so there is not equal justice and equal protection for human beings 
under the law. And this is a wicked and sinful thing. So that we allow legalized slaughter of human beings here in the state of Connecticut. And let me say this. Why do you think Planned Parenthood is plopped right here in the north end of Hartford? I'll tell you why. Because Planned Parenthood is a racist organization that is bent upon killing as many black and brown babies as they can. If you look up and you read about the woman, Margaret Sanger, who started Planned Parenthood, Parenthood, you can look it up yourself. Margaret Sanger was a racist. And as a racist woman, she was bent upon killing as many people as she could from the black and brown community. That's Margaret Sanger. That's the person who began Planned Parenthood. So they put Planned Parenthood right here in the north end of Hartford because they intentionally want to kill as many black and brown babies as they can. You go to West Hartford and it's in Elmwood. Why do they not put Planned Parenthood in the nice, clean, white, affluent sections of Connecticut? Because it's a racist organization that is bent upon the destruction of black people. God bless you, sir. And so I'm here calling out for the lives of innocent little babies. I don't care what color they are. I don't care what language they speak. I don't care how they were conceived. It doesn't matter how they were conceived because once they are conceived, they are human beings. And as human beings, according to God's law, they are worthy of equal justice and equal protection under the law. But you see, Planned Parenthood has the legal protection of helping women and men kill their own offspring. And that is a sin before God, to kill your own offspring. And it doesn't matter whether it's inside of a woman or outside of a woman. What do you think, sir? Do you agree? I know I'm a boy. Are they human beings? Well, the Bible says that they are human beings. And it doesn't matter how big they are, how developed they are. What matters is that they are made in the image of God. And these Planned Parenthoods and other abortion clinics have the protection of the state of Connecticut, of the Supreme Court, of the police, of the churches here in Connecticut. Abortion exists because of the churches in Connecticut, because the Christians do not believe in and do not obey the law of God. You see, if, the, if even the churches stood up for life, abortion would end all throughout the United States. Do you believe that abortion is murder, ma'am? You see, here's the church right here, United Methodist Church, and I could speak against the United Methodist Church because I was a United Methodist pastor. I was ordained in the United Methodist Church at one time. And I've since left that apostate denomination that denies the authority of the Word of God and salvation by grace alone, by faith alone, by the blood of Jesus Christ alone. You see, the church is silent in the United States. The church is silent. And to be silent in the midst of a Holocaust is to be complicit to the Holocaust itself. The church was silent during the Holocaust in Nazi Germany. 
and the blood of all those Jews and all the people that were killed under Adolf Hitler was on the hands of the people of the, who called upon, that said that they were Christians, the people who went to church. They were silent for the most part with the slaughter of the Jews in Nazi Germany. And the church was silent during the time of slavery. The church even promoted slavery during those times. The pastors had no backbone, and so they would not preach against those who were stealing human beings and then selling them as chattel. And now the church of Jesus Christ throughout the United States is silent about the Holocaust that is happening in our land. And so the blood of these innocent babies is on the hands of every Christian, every Christian in the state of Connecticut. There's not a Christian, anybody, if you go to church and you're not standing up for the lives of the unborn babies, then I tell you, you are not doing what Jesus Christ said because Jesus Christ himself said, and I quote, whatever you do to the least of these, you do unto me. And so as they poison little babies with, with RU486 pills, you're doing it unto Jesus Christ because they are the least. And when they open up the cervix and they rip that little baby limb for limb, that's what they do. They open up the woman's cervix. She lays down and asks them to do this. They open up her cervix and they first start ripping off the arms of these little babies. They rip them off. No pain medication whatsoever. They rip off their arms and they rip off their legs and they rip off their head. And Christians are okay with this. Every abortion clinic should have a sign in front of it that says open by permission of the church. Because if the people of God finally woke up and spoke up for these innocent little babies, abortion would end today. I should be surrounded by Christians. I should be surrounded by pastors. I should be surrounded by every person that calls upon the name of Jesus Christ calling out for the lives of these little innocent babies in the womb. And they are human beings. In ancient Israel, they practiced child sacrifice. They practiced child sacrifice because they believed that as they sacrificed their children to the various gods like Molech or Baal or Astrith, that that God would bestow upon them favor if they killed their babies. Those demons are still around today because so many people abort their babies because they believe that they will have prosperity if they destroy their child through abortion. They believe that they don't have enough money, so they got to kill their child. They believe that they don't have the time, so they kill their child. And I tell you, God is angry with abortion. And that's not what you're going to hear in all the happy, clappy churches these days that are trying to make everybody feel good about themselves. God is angry. Read what the Bible says about God being angry when innocent little babies are being slaughtered. What you do to the least of these, you do unto me. So every baby that is aborted, that is what we are doing to Jesus himself. And Jesus Christ himself considers that an affront against him, against himself. And then we have legislators, we have senators, we have people in the House of Representatives that instead of representing unborn babies, they vote against them. They vote for their destruction. They vote for laws that does not give them equal protection under the law. And every legislator who has voted to promote child sacrifice 
and promote the murder of innocent babies, whatever means that may be, the blood of all those babies is on their hands. And we have a governor here in the state of Connecticut that is as bloodthirsty a governor as I have seen in all my life. They delight in the murder of innocent little babies. They delight in it. To pass laws protecting the slaughter of innocent babies is to say that killing babies is right and good and holy because the law determines what is right and what is wrong and it's only God's law that ultimately tells us what's right and what's wrong. The governor is the one that can veto bills that would promote child sacrifice and our governor has committed himself to keep this slaughter going, to keep child sacrifice going. And so has Susan Bicewich. And so has most of the senators. They continually, God bless you, brother. God bless you. So has Susan Bicewich and so has every senator that has voted for child sacrifice. And so is every senator and every house person in the House of Representatives that are against abortion that have not done and said everything absolutely possible to end the child sacrifice here in the state of Connecticut. Because pro-life, pro-life allows there to be the systematic and selective slaughter of some human beings and not other human beings. And so the pro-life movement has sold its soul. Because if you are okay with some child sacrifice, that means you are okay with all child sacrifice. To say that you're okay with child sacrifice in cases of rape and incest is to say that you are okay with the murder of innocent babies. And yes, there are times when innocent babies are conceived in this world in a way that is absolutely wrong and sinful but the child, the baby himself or herself, should not have to pay, should not have to be executed because of the sin of the father or the mother. And the right to life is okay for babies being slaughtered 12 weeks and younger, or whether there's a heartbeat or not, because the pro-life movement is not about saving babies. The pro-life movement has become about earning a lot of money, making a lot of money. And they talk about mothers being a victim. What mother is a victim when she voluntarily, with malice of forethought, puts a pill in her mouth in order to kill her own child? That is murder with malice of forethought. That's what it is. And so any woman that comes to an abortion clinic with the intent, malice of forethought, to kill her own child is a murderer. And it's not until abortion becomes a crime, the crime that it is under law, it will continue on forever here in the state of Connecticut. Well, it won't forever because Jesus Christ is going to come again and he is going to end abortion someday. It will be abolished. Abortion will someday be abolished. It's going to happen. And it may not be in my lifetime, but someday abortion will be abolished because abortion is a wicked sin. Just like slavery was abolished because that was a wicked sin against humanity, so abortion will be abolished because that is a wicked sin against humanity too. Because the God Almighty of the universe, the God of the Bible, will not allow this wicked sin to continue for all time. The Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And someday God 
will bring about justice and he will bring about vengeance. He will bring about justice against all these little innocent babies that have been murdered through abortion. So the responsibility of these little babies is on our hands. And if you believe that abortion is a good thing, God have mercy upon your soul. Abortion is murder. But God says that you can have forgiveness for murder in Jesus Christ alone. How many babies here at the north end of Hartford have been slaughtered in this place? How many babies in the north end of Hartford have been killed, murdered, sacrificed in this Planned Parenthood, Planned Murderhood? Only God knows how many babies have been murdered. Only God truly knows how many babies have been killed So the person who's renting this, who owns this building that rents it to Planned Parenthood, the blood of these innocent babies is upon your hands. The rent money from Planned Parenthood is blood money. And whoever owns this building and leases it out to Planned Parenthood, the blood of every single child that has been murdered in this place that you own, the blood of those babies is on your hands. And every person who works in Planned Parenthood, all that money that you earn is blood money. Every child that has been sacrificed by the workers of Planned Parenthood is on their hands. It's blood money. How you doing, sir? What do you think about abortion? You think it's murder, you don't care? How could you be indifferent? How could you be indifferent to the slaughter of your human beings? How could people be indifferent to the fact that you, little human beings are being sacrificed, are being killed? I mean, why, 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 would we have, why would we have me, some white guy, coming to North End of Hartford calling out for the lives of black babies because that's what's being killed here. They put it here in the north end of Hartford because they want black babies here in the north end of Hartford to be killed. Because Planned Parenthood is all about the murder and execution of little babies. That's why it's here in the north end of Hartford. Those little babies in the womb are human beings. They are human beings and they're worthy of life. And if you take their life, you are committing murder, according to God Almighty. The Bible says very clearly, thou shalt not murder. And what he's referring to is the murder of human beings. And we are human beings from the moment of conception. Our humanity begins, human life begins at the moment of conception. And as soon as you take that life, any human being takes the life of another human being, that is murder in the first degree. But even that sin can be forgiven by Jesus Christ. You see, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ upon the cross for all who look to Christ 
alone for salvation can have their sins forgiven by God Almighty through the blood of Jesus Christ. And the only way that the blood of these babies will be washed off of our hands is by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God and the Son of Man who died upon the cross on behalf of sinners. And so you could be forgiven if you have participated in child sacrifice, if you participated, participated in abortion. Whatever sin you have participated in, God can and will forgive you of your sin. But that doesn't mean that we just sit home. Biblical Christianity calls us to stand up for the fatherless, to seek justice for the fatherless, to rescue those who are being led to slaughter. That's uh, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 11. The Bible calls us to be the voice for those who have no voice. That's Proverbs chapter 31, verse 8. The Bible calls us to establish justice and protection to the innocent and the vulnerable and the childless. And there is nobody more innocent and vulnerable than little babies in the side of a woman's womb. There was one time, well, I'm going to say it this way, the most dangerous place on the face of the earth, the most dangerous place and the north end of Hartford is inside of a woman's womb. The most dangerous place on, in the United States of America is inside of a woman's womb. Because more babies are killed, more human beings are killed inside of a woman's womb than in any other way, in any other place on the face of the planet and in the state of Connecticut in the land of the brave and the free. Over 100 million babies very easily, that number is probably very conservative, have been killed since 1973. Over 100 million babies. That makes the womb the most dangerous place on the face of the earth. How you doing, sir? What do you think? Am I convincing you? How you doing? Abortion's murder. Do you agree? Do you agree that abortion is murder? It's murder of human beings. What's that? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. No, we don't have a right to take another human being's life doesn't matter how big they are, how small they are, the color of their skin. We don't have the right to take another human being's life. You see the relativistic belief that people have that somehow there's some sort of reason that we have that we could come up with an excuse for murder. What do you think, sir? Do you think abortion is murder? It is murder. Amen. You know more black and brown babies are killed here than any other place? Right, for real. Planned Parenthood. God bless you, sir. <laughs> Douglas McCrory I, don't, McCrory, I don't know if you're there or not. I don't know if you're hearing my voice. But it is the providence of God that your office would be in the same building as Planned Parenthood. And that your sign right here with your face on it would be right next to a Planned Parenthood. That puts you at a place where it's right in your own backyard. It's right in your camp. 
Who's going to stand up for these innocent little babies? Who's going to stand up and protect the little babies in the north end of Hartford and all throughout Hartford? I could get a dime a dozen of people who are for abortion. Dime a dozen for people who are pro-life. But I'll tell you, a man or a woman who will stand up as an abolitionist, that's a man worthy of voting for. A man or woman who would say that abortion must be abolished to be just as relentless about abortion as the, as the abolitionists were against slave trading and slavery. You could go down in history as being a man who just did what everybody else did as a Democrat, even half the Republicans and the other half are pro-life and say that you are for the slaughter of innocent human beings. Or you could become a man with a backbone. You could be a man that will go down in history, Connecticut history, United States history, and world history, and more importantly, God's history as being the man who is in the Senate that called for relentlessly the abolition of abortion in Connecticut. That we would be the first state in the union that would actually abolish abortion. You see, these other states that say that they are abolishing abortion, they're not at all. The abortion pill is, is running rampant. Over two-thirds of all abortions are by abortion pills. And until abortion becomes a criminal act in the state, it will continue on. Just like slavery continued, when they regulated slavery, when they had incrementalism in slavery, it continued on and on. Do your, do your history, do your fact check of what I'm saying. If you regulate abortion, it will continue on. It must be the abolition, uncompromising, unapologetic abolition of abortion. That's the only way. And make it a crime. Make it the crime that it is. If you care about North End of Hartford, if you care about the black community, you will be an abolitionist. And you'll call for the end of the slaughter of black and brown babies here in the north end of Hartford because that's what's happening here. That's what's happening here. That's what's happening here. Child sacrifice. Black and brown babies are being murdered, slaughtered. Right here in this building. Or they're giving women the tools to do it themselves and they go home and they pop it in their mouth a couple times, one after another, a couple days apart, and those little babies are flushed down the toilet. That's the, what's happening in the north end of Hartford. In Elmwood, it's happening in Danbury, it's happening in Meriden, it's happening in Torrington, it's happening in New Haven. It's happening in Bloomfield, where little innocent babies are being slaughtered. And it's not until it is abolished that God will bring peace and justice into this earth. It's not until we do what we're supposed to do according to the Word of God. Because that blood is on our hands.